To start, you'll need one of the printouts. He provides them on the Instructables website. I also used his plans to create a smaller bunny alongside the big one, and I mirrored the leg so that way we prevent blowout when drilling out the holes for the dowel rod. My first tip is to pay attention to grain direction. The rabbit's ears and their legs are the most brittle parts, and that's just because of how thin they get, especially with the smaller rabbits and being made out of pine. It's not an overly strong board, and they are liable to break. When I was six years old, I broke my leg. I was running from my brother and his friends. Am I supposed to be the rabbit? And tasted the sweet perfume on the mountain grass I rolled down. In planning the legs, it's best for them to go with the grain direction. That way you minimize that weak point in the bottom. And then same with the rabbit, it's best for him to go with grain direction. That'll strengthen the ear and your leg. However, we can't do that with our rabbits. Well, we can't do it with the big rabbit. I can do it with the tiny rabbit. The big rabbit is going to have to go this direction. And just take note of that while sanding, just to make sure you're not putting too much pressure. You break off the ears of the rabbit you've been working on. A shortcut to transferring your rabbit onto the board without using transfer paper is to just put your rabbit onto the board and then take your pencil and you are going to just trace out where the rabbit is, just like this. Now, it's best to use a dull pencil or just one that has a really fat head and that's just because you don't want it to rip through the paper when you're pushing down too hard. This section right here, I also like to push up a little bit when I trace it out. So I would actually trace it out to be about an eighth of an inch taller. And that's just because there's a dowel rod that'll swing down beneath there. So it's best to draw him up a little bit. And with that, when you pick up your piece, you'll see an outline of where the rabbit you have just doodled was, and that's just because it suppresses the board down a little bit. And that pencil is comical, but <laughs> it's a nightmare to use. So I'm going back to a regular pencil. And then with that on there, you just trace over the top of where the indent is on your paper. With everything doodled, I'm just going to trim this board down so it's a smaller piece to work with. At the miter saw or jigsaw, you are first going to remove the bulk waste material. Then, carefully carve out the bunny and legs. The tiny bunny is a little tricky. Be safe and do not do anything that you are uncomfortable with. And always remember where your fingers are. Flip over to your drill press, or simply just use a cordless drill, and using a quarter inch bit, drill out the eyes and the spot for the dowels. Now we have all the holes at a quarter inch thick. This one needs to be a little bit bigger because that dowel rod needs to move freely inside of there so that the hopping motion can happen. So to achieve that, all I do is take my cordless drill, pop them in the hole, and then I just kind of rock them around to make it a little bit larger. just like that, so that way when he puts him in there, he spins around freely, and that is for that hopping motion. These holes you do not want to affect because they will actually be glued with the dowel rods in them. And after that, we just need to sand down the project. I'm just using a scrap piece of 60 grit paper. It is best to use a combination squares ruler just to get into those tight crevices, or if you have a Sharpie laying around with that gentle bevel. That's what I use. Now we'll need two pieces of that quarter inch dowel rod I cut mine to two and a half inches each. And if you want your legs to match perfectly, you can just sandwich them together inside those dowel rods and sand them accordingly. Then I do a dry fit just to make sure he hops to my liking. So put your dowel rods into one of the legs. I use a washer on the bigger ones just because it fits, you won't see it, and it gives me a little bit of a spacer. So pop a washer in there if you want to. The top hole goes through the hole. The bottom one goes into that little inlet you had carved out, and that's to actually stop the leg from going too far forward or backwards. Another washer. Assemble the leg. 
and then again pull them apart just a little bit to give it enough space so that this moves on its own and then give it a hop now i actually know what it's doing this is very smooth and this is smooth so it actually doesn't have anything to grip like this so i put a small piece of sandpaper on the front to give it that hopping motion You're always my favorite rabbit. Just a little bit of sandpaper. And he hops. Other troubleshooting, if he just stops, okay, I know you want to hop now. If he just stops like that um, or falls on his face, he could just have a little too much weight on the front or your angle is just slightly too much. So take a little bit of pitch out of the angle. Otherwise, if he's just kind of sits on his bottom, or doesn't hop forward or doesn't have enough oomph for the legs to move forward angle could be too much take the angle down or try to take some material off of the back they are a lot easier to paint while they are unassembled so you're not trying to paint behind the legs and once you have that done glue your dowels into place cut them to size and you're done all right guys video's over see ya oh p.s I hid one of these eggs in the video. If you can find it in the video, comment what time it is. It is not right now when I'm showing it to you. And you'll win a prize. And no, it's not a bunny. It's a gift card. Oh my god! The bunnies are hopping into the planer! No!